right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Farnoosh Brock, who is in North Carolina. How are you doing, Farnoosh? I'm doing great. Nice to, nice to see you and speak with you today, John. Yeah. And Farnoosh is the CEO and founder of uh, Prolific Ling Living Inc. She's speaker, author, four-time author, business coach, career coach. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about your book, The Serving Mindset, Stop Selling and Grow Your Business. Um, so first off, um, Farnoosh, what, what was the genesis behind this book? And why did you feel the need that you needed to write a book that basically says stop selling for salespeople? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. The line I had to uh, fight my publishers to keep. <laughs> so um, when I left my corporate job about 10 years ago, John, mm -hmm. I figured out every aspect of running a business, becoming a coach, writing books, what have you, and even brought my husband on board. But the selling was never quite right. It didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. I was mediocre at it. I mean, successful, but it just didn't feel right. And I wanted to find a way to be successful and to feel good about every aspect of the process. Right. And so I started to explore other ways to help people and still charge appropriately for my gifts, for my talents, for my services. And so I moved away from the traditional selling techniques, having an agenda, and, and I was open to exploring. And I found with true serving, not only have I been able to really scale and grow my coaching practice to the point where I charge the prices that I feel are highly scalable, but it also feels great. I have the best clients and I was still figuring this out and I hadn't written a book about it, but then I started to teach the technique and the framework to my business clients. And then I thought, you know what? I should write a book on this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so so when you um, so when you first went into sales and all of that, I mean the the first part of your book is you say the problem is in your thinking, um, and how you think about sales and why we hate sales so much. So why why is it that you had that reaction when you went and you go, oh, I don't, you know, I don't really like the whole idea of sales the way yeah. it's constituted. Right. I mean, the thinking is first, because every time you talk to people, they want to know, okay, what do I do differently? Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important to think of yourself and your relationship with selling. A lot of us are turned off by selling. A lot mm -hmm. of us think it's something we have to do. The necessary evil phrase comes to mind. And I don't believe that's true. That's all in your thinking. You're still doing all the right things. But if your thinking is that this is something I have to do, and this is not something I enjoy. I'm not a salesperson, mm -hmm. but I'm in business. I guess I have to do it. All of that, it hurts you. It is hurting mm -hmm. you right now. And so we have to start with your mindset. And the mindset of selling however you frame it, feels pushy. Nobody in the world wants to be sold to, but people love to buy. Mm -hmm. And so how do we enable them to do that? How do we respect them in the process? How do we honor the values we want to have? Because that's why we went into business. A lot of us didn't want to put up with a lot of BS in the corporate world or what have you. And we still have to honor that. But at the same time, the other side of the scale, charging appropriately. It is not about giving away your services. It's about balancing and understanding it. When there is a fit, then you explore opportunities together. That mm -hmm. comes from a place of serving. That first happens in a shift in your thinking. Yeah. Happy to dive deeper. I want to be respectful of our yeah, time. No, 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 no. So, so um, okay. So I, I, I agree with that. So a lot of it, a lot of it comes from how we perceive ourselves, I think as well. Okay. And obviously when people get into sales, sometimes they, you know, they come in with all these negative ideas about sales and they almost feel, apolo they feel apologetic or almost ashamed that they're doing that job to begin with. Yes, yes, yes. And, and we're apologizing, but why are we even doing it in the first place? It's because we don't think there's another way. And believe me, I was in that category for mm -hmm. many, many uh, years. Well, not many years. It felt like many years. But what if there is another way where you feel powerful and confident in that prospecting conversation? 
Like yeah. when you feel you are able to help this person, you come from a completely different place. And I, I believe you actually increase your profits at the end of the day. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's a, and again, I'm going to let you direct where you want me to go. I can yeah, yeah. No, no. So um, what I was going to ask you about, I love the fact that you have this whole part around uh, mindset and limiting beliefs in your book. And, and before we get into some of them, um, you actually have a question there. One of the chapters is, what is, what is a mindset? And, and I, think that's a, I think that's a great thing for you to, um, to talk to our listeners and viewers about because we hear mindset all the time. And, yes. and, but I often wonder, do we really understand what that really means in practice? Good question. It's the latest buzzword, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I define it as your perspective onto the world. You look at the world through your own lens and that lens changes possibly over time. So you look at a situation a certain way and that is driven by your experiences, your values, your life principles. And so that is the way you look at a subject matter. So how you look at selling is your mindset around selling and it has been shaped and formed by your experiences or by watching others in your life, observing their experiences and then you formulate your opinions. And um, we're all familiar with Carol Dweck. She, um, she talks mm. about the growth mindset and you know, it's nothing new. You either have a fixed mindset where you believe this is just who I am, not true by the way, and I welcome the arguments. And then there is the growth mindset, mindset that says, I wonder if there is another way to look at the situation. The situation is what it is, but I wonder if there's another way I can look at it and form a different relationship around it and perhaps do things that better serve me, my goals, my mission, my purpose in life. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I love that. I love that, um, the fixed versus growth. And also, because you also go into the other part there, abundance versus scarcity. And I think those two are, <clears throat> are obviously very connected. But I think, I think a lot of it has to do with how you view the world, whether you see it, it as a world of abundance or whether you see that we're all scrapping for a, a finite pie. And if you get a piece of it, that means it's less for me. Nice. Um, so talk to me a little bit about that, because I do think that is, that is very much life changing when you switch from scarcity to abundance. Absolutely. I mean, just to give a quick definition, scarcity says there just isn't enough work mm -hmm. business opportunities out there for me. Therefore, I have to grab everything that comes my way. Therefore, you show up in that prospecting call from that place of I need you, which I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but it's creepy and unattractive. Yeah. And it comes across, you're not a good actor, you can't hide it. So that's the scarcity and there is a spectrum. It's not a switch like you go from scarcity to abundance. The abundance on the other side of the spectrum says, I'm wondering if there's an opportunity here for this prospect. I know that I am good at what I do. And I think that is a premise. You need to be good at what you do. Mm -hmm. Charge appropriately, what have you. Sure. But you're good at what you do. You know that about yourself and you are trying to figure out your experience exploring whether this prospect that's before you today is a good fit for you. And if not, you are confident, even in a year of the pandemic, and I'm living that, my business has expanded and I've never once sold. It's because I believe I have things that can help people, but I, I have to find the right people. It has to be a good fit. And by serving, you explore that. So when I show up, I am not making people feel uncomfortable. I don't make them feel sold to. We don't feel like we need each other. And even I tell my prospects, you don't need me. You don't even need a coach. It's a matter of whether you would like one and mm -hmm. whether I can help you. So that's the mindset. But you know, the way you can ask yourself where you are is really asking yourself, how do you feel right now? Like it is a difficult time. I am not making mm -hmm. it small, but do you believe that you have things that can help others and that you have the means, the resources, the, the creativity, creativity to find those others, to form relationships, to build trust and to explore opportunities to work together because mm -hmm. the opportunities are out there. You may have mm -hmm. to pivot, what have you. Whereas if you're yeah. in a scarcity mindset, you feel limited, you feel stifled, you feel small. And it's also how you feel in your body. That's another indicator. 
So, yeah. and the good news, I'm going to end on that note, is that you don't have to stay there. Like, it's not in your genetics or in mm. your personality. No, you can change. Yeah, and I think that's a, such an important message is that you don't have to stay stuck where you are. Um, so, so let's talk a little bit more about the idea of, of serving because, uh, you know, I think also that's something other, other people maybe don't understand completely because often they say, well, yeah, you know, I, I serve my customers or whatever. But what does it really mean? Having a service-oriented mindset, what does that really mean? Right. So we're, we're just to be specific, we're not talking so much about customers, but let's talk sure. about prospective mm -hmm. customers. Mm -hmm. These people yeah. aren't your customers yet. So they may mm -hmm. or may not become that. So coming from a serving mindset, one thing I talk about, and I talk about it in the book too, is drop your agenda. And first of all, half of the people don't want to admit they have an agenda. The other half are like, what are you talking about? We're here to do business. I know. Mm -hmm. But when you are driving, you are driven by your agenda, John, we mm -hmm. feel we're not totally present with the other prospect. We are not able to really feel and make them feel heard and understood. And from, from you know, the serving mindset perspective, sure. you're not able to do the work that I talk about because trust happens in that moment where the other person believes you don't have an agenda. Yes, you have a business, you have a service, you could help them, but you don't have an agenda on that call. Mm -hmm. That alone, take that on, drop your agenda, go to that next conversation and ask, you know what, I'm very glad to be speaking to you, John, Janet, I'm wondering, let's explore how I can help you. I may or may not be able to help you, but let's, let's explore, here's how I run my conversations, and you lead from there, mm -hmm. as opposed to being sneaky and having that hidden agenda, and it comes across. And, you know, we experience it every day, every day on LinkedIn, every day on, you know, social media. And it's just not attractive. And I think if you're going to raise the bar and charge at a level that 1% of your industry is charging, because that has been my aim, mm -hmm. you need to come from a different place. And you need to form deep trust and genuine mm -hmm. relationships. Yeah. And I, th and I think part of this also goes back to how, you know, an organization approaches sales, obviously how the leadership of that company, how the sales leadership and all of that, how they, um, the way that they drive their people or lead or, or mentor their, their, their folks, how to sell. I mean, that, that's an important part too, correct? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I think maybe where you're going is, well, people are on a commission and a deadline and the reality mm -hmm. is they need to close a certain amount. And if you are in that situation, then first of all, if you're in a culture that does not uh, endorse the serving mm -hmm. mindset or it does, but it doesn't uh, follow through with action, then you have to ask yourself whether that is a company organization you want to grow old with in your career. Mm -hmm. sure issue altogether but let's say your circumstances are today you're being pushed from your bosses to sell i would ask you if you want to take on the serving mindset to find any elements that you control that you could modify for instance they're not looking over your shoulder on how you're having conversations mm -hmm. can you be more empathetic can you ask permission before you pitch can you find out more about them and explore whether they even have the desire to work with your company. You still have an agenda, I get that, but shifting any elements, because having that selling mindset is so prevalent, any, any genuine move towards serving will come across to your prospects mm -hmm. because they will see sincerity, they will feel it. And I think you start small and then you experience the results. Are you getting more people to lean in and be genuinely interested? And, and then you do more. And if you have success, maybe you can slowly talk to your management about it and bring yeah. it to your leadership if you have that courage and become, want to become yeah. an influencer. Well, I mean, I think that the fact is that if you show success with it, they'll always wonder why you're suddenly showing success and yes. what your reasons are. And, and there's nothing that people love to copy more than it's the success of uh, whatever somebody else is doing to be, to be successful. Do you also think that, I mean, this, what you're talking about was already important, but we've gone through this strange experience, strange collective experience, and it seems like people's sensitivities obviously are more, are more heightened than ever. 
but also it seems that people are craving more than ever that genuine empathetic connection with people regardless of what the circumstance is but particularly in in a selling situation a thousand times yes I mean, a thousand times, yes, yes. I mean, first of all, the empathy and the understanding that needs to happen in any conversation, even sure. if you're not selling or anything. Mm -hmm. I hope for more of that because we just need to connect more on a human level. But you know, John, I believe even though we have all this technology and I am a tech addict, I love all mm -hmm. the technology, it comes down to human relationships. Yeah. You know, I have scaled my business. I've never advertised, not a zero dollars for coaching services, advertising, I just don't believe in it, but it's relationships over time. That human connection, relationships over time, which means you have to sustain, you have to nurture. That I think is the foundation of, unless you're selling a product at mass volume, okay? We're sure. talking about professional services. Mm -hmm. That is going to be the key, the currency that we need to continue to nurture. So if you develop your skills around that, serving is a skill to connect without your agenda with another human being. being. You still have your boundaries. You're not giving away two, three hours of your time where, mm -hmm. right? But perhaps you choose to invest half an hour or an hour because it makes sense in your model and your framework. But when you do that, whatever that may be, you do it from a place of service. You are unattached to outcome, but at the same time, if you recognize there's an opportunity to help them, you ask permission. You know what, John, based on this conversation, I feel highly confident I can help you. Would you mm. like to see what that might look like? I tell you, but I don't presume because that would be disrespectful. And right. then you might say, no, not now, great, or perhaps yes. Mm -hmm. And I like that you put in that clarification there that it doesn't mean that you suddenly become somebody who's giving well, away hours and hours of your time and you're doing lots of work for free and yeah, and potentially getting taken advantage of because I think it comes back to what we said at the beginning, you have to respect your own skill set and your own and what you have to offer. And while yes, you can maybe go that extra mile and help, you know, help somebody invest a little time, it doesn't mean that you give away the shop. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And you know, you might choose to be more generous this year. Sure. I have been, and I didn't have an agenda, but I chose. It was a conscious choice. It didn't come from a place of scarcity or need, or I have to. And I can tell you, it's been paying off in new doors opening that I hadn't even anticipated. But um, you can choose if you're running your own business. But yes, everything you said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's excellent. And and so if you had if if you were able to do one thing to help salespeople the world over right now, if you said there's just one one step you can take today on this journey, what would that be? Only one, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would say, can you can you bring a little more sincerity into uh -huh. into the equation? Just more sincerity, and the sincerity isn't on the surface it comes deep from inside like do you have you sincerely believe your products and services or your com the company you represent help people or are you just driven by an agenda just mm -hmm. one percent more sincerity please can we have that because that can help us move slightly in a better direction and um, you will be more successful as a result of it but you have to experience it to believe it so 1% more sincerity, please. That's on my wish list. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. I think 1% more sincerity in the world, just in general, would probably yes. be a, a good thing. And maybe and maybe 1% less um, arguing. <laughs> <laughs> Lies, deception. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So listen, Farnoosh, this has been fantastic. The book is The Serving Mindset, Stop Selling and Grow Your Business. All of Farnoosh's information will be below the video here. But please, before you go, tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure, sure. So I'm really passionate about coaching business owners and entrepreneurs, as well as professionals in the corporate world to navigate conversations and relationships using the serving mindset. I have written a number of books, but I'm not writing anymore right now. And I was about to launch my speaking career, but it's a little bit on hold. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I live in North Carolina. I am very active on LinkedIn and I am passionate about building genuine relationships. My network is global. I, I think 
for just like one citizen, right? One global yeah. citizen. So feel free to reach out and connect with me on LinkedIn. Parnush Prof, parnushprof.com if you like to check that out. And John, thank you so much. I really appreciate you um, having me on your show. And the book is The Serving Mindset and it's everywhere you buy your books. Amazon. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you, Parnush. And I would highly recommend checking out the book. I do think, and I sincerely think that you're not going to get a better time than now to invest in yourself. And so books like Farnoosh's, I think, are, are absolutely a great way of, um, who knows, this could, be, this could be the catalyst for the best part of your career yet if you use the time, like rather seeing it as, as putting a halt on everything, maybe it actually is a pause to allow you to develop yourself to come out even stronger at the other end. That's the plan. That is the plan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so All much. Right. Yeah, thank you. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.